a startup in the world of logistics, and I'll speak about a bit more about uh, the company itself in the uh, next slides. Our focus is on documentation and document transfer. Uh, by using blockchain, we were able to reduce the costs and stress of international document exchange tenfold. And uh, in this presentation, I'll try to explain how. So uh, before we start, let me just tell you about myself. So uh, as Sean already explained, I'm the CTO. My name is Boyan. So my background is in IT. I worked in various companies and industries at different levels for over 20 years now and uh, gathered a lot of different experience. I'm currently now in uh, logistics and shipping industry but if you do wish to contact me here are the details and uh, contacting cargo x also so um, our story actually begins with the bill of lading for those of you who are not familiar with this type of document allow me to give you a brief overview so it's the most important document in the maritime world it enables maritime trade and holds three very important functions it's a document of value and document of ownership it denotes the terms and conditions of the carriage, and it's used to release the goods at the port of destination. Bill of lading is usually the foundation for the letter of credit, insurance covers, and similar in the international trade. Maritime logistics is a big industry. Over 400 million documents are sent annually, and sea freight industry weights at in at over $200 billion per year. So this is a big business, and documents here really have a lot of value. Traditionally, this document would need to be printed as an original by the issuing party. The document would then be packaged and delivered by the courier service while the actual cargo was traveling by a freight ship. It would usually travel by plane or road independently of the cargo. This process is slow, it's time consuming and most importantly expensive. It's estimated that this process costs over $5 million in courier costs alone. However, the issue is not unique to the bills of lading. There are many documents nowadays that need to be sent in paper form as they are documents of title or require authenticity of said document. Email and previous faxes have been available for quite some time. However, in practice, a lot of documentation is still shared in physical form due, due to these constraints that I mentioned previously. Now, of course, this results in many issues. Physical documents are not environmentally friendly and have higher cost of manipulation. Documents of title can sometimes get lost, stolen, or forged, representing a significant business risk and additional cost to reissue these documents. We just recently published a horror story on our website explaining how one company that we know has uh, had an issue with a stolen uh, bill of lading. Transfer of documents usually takes days as opposed to the digital transfer, which can be done on blockchain in an average of 15 seconds. Archiving documentation is also a big challenge. To reduce costs, a lot of companies decide to rescan these documents and keep the originals off-site. There are also many challenges with paper documents and uh, regulators and government bodies as well. They have difficulty verifying the authenticity of the document, if we are talking about, for example, an import certificate, or documents or certificate of origin and documents bringing physical documents to customs authority takes time and money. So Cargo X said that there has to be a way to do this easier and the idea was to transfer these documents digitally. While there are already companies which provide civil service, blockchain was a new momentum in the world that promised to simplify and streamline a lot of things. We started off with the idea in October 2017 and by July next year, we were able to transfer the first original document of title over a public blockchain. Currently, we have over 5,000 documents already processed on the platform and we are getting ready to release the next generation of the platform. Now, using blockchain has enabled us to create an exact replica of the bill of lading online without the shortcomings of the traditional centralized systems. Using blockchain, the guarantee of authenticity and immutability of the document is inherent in the technology itself. And this is one of the great benefits of blockchain. Now, uh, blockchain was the perfect fit for what we were trying to achieve. For the first time in human history, we can create digital assets as blockchain offers digital scarcity, the possibility to have unique digital entities. This wasn't possible previously. Blockchain as such is a proven technology. 
it has an unbroken track record with over 10 years worth of transactions. So the first blockchain was Bitcoin in 2008. So now that's more than 10 years and the technology still works. Decentralization also means there's no central repository, no single point of failure, no way or uh, reduces downtimes to practically zero, which is especially important in international trade. And the records on the blockchain are immutable by design. Once recorded, they have, they're impossible to change, which is ideal for creating digital trust and verifying authenticity. So why we decided to go with a public blockchain? There are many types of blockchain and distributed ledger technologies. In general, blockchains can be split into public and private blockchains. The biggest difference being that public blockchains have no governing body. Anyone can join and leave a public blockchain. Nobody controls the data. Number of nodes is in usually in thousands. Private blockchains, on the other hand, usually run on tens or hundreds of nodes and the joining and accessing the data is more explicit. That's precisely why we decided to run with the public blockchain. So this way, the current holder of the digital document, and I cannot stress this enough, is always known and outside cargo access influence and control. So this information is recorded and publicly available. This also means that the transfer log of the document, uh, for example, the bill of rating, is always available and verifiable by anyone. Most importantly, access to the public blockchain cannot be revoked or prevented, which is critical in the international trade. Public blockchain is run by individuals and companies all over the world, and CargoX is merely one of those users. So CargoX does not control the data or how this blockchain works. And finally, with that many nodes, changing data is impossible. With private blockchain, a consensus of 51% of all involved nodes is much easier to achieve and potentially change historical data. With public blockchain, that's practically impossible. Now, CargoX enables the digitalization of trade documents on the back of the blockchain document transaction system. This allows anyone to transfer documents of value around the world in seconds while preserving the historical ownership, timestamp, endorsement, and logbook. All of this is already available and live on our platform, smartbl.io. Uh, while using digital documents can represent considerable cost savings, it also brings many other benefits. Users can now work from home, as there is no need to go to the office to pick up paper documents. There's no need to interact with the physical paper, which can become dirty, misplaced, or damaged. There's no need for courier, service, courier delivery services, as everything can be done electronically. So signing up for this platform, we, we, we are quite all open about how we market and how we sell this platform. So signing for the platform is free. Most users uh, also use it for free, only the issuer of the document pays for the service. I would like also to point out that it's possible to use the application solely through the web interface. We offer complete API access for complete interoperability with existing platforms. In this way, the users of existing systems can start using the blockchain and blockchain related technologies completely transparently. I have a short video here explaining the process of the application. Uh, let's watch it together. The bill of lading is the oldest standardized document. Sorry, hello. Yes, we seem to have hung up here. Yeah. Okay, can you see my video? Can you see my screen at all? No, I can see your screen. It is, uh, the video has stopped. Okay. Let's see. Cargo okay. Shipping. Yeah. This threefold legal document holds the key to cargo ownership, which makes it the most valuable piece of paper in global logistics. Slow and expensive, prone to human error, loss and counterfeiting, the workflow of this important document remained basically unchanged to this day. Cargo X is a new force on the logistics Sorry. market with a mission to forever change the bill of lading. Latest developments in blockchain technology have enabled us to create a bulletproof smart bill of lading workflow. 
Instead of printing the BL and the hassle and expenses involved with couriers, with Cargo X, creating and sending a smart BL is just a few clicks away and available at a mere 10% of the price. If the BL is lost or stolen, it takes weeks to issue a new one. In the meantime, the cargo is already at the destination port and the importer is paying hundreds of dollars per day in demurrage costs. With Cargo X Smart BL, this can never happen. Let us show you how easy it is to create and send a Smart BL using an everyday example. As soon as the cargo is loaded, the logistics company creates a new Smart BL in our web-based application and sends it to the exporter. This and all of the following steps utilize the latest encryption protocols to transfer the digital BL in a matter of minutes and at a fraction of the cost associated with paper-based BLs. When payment for goods is received, the exporter transfers the smart BL to the importer with just a few clicks. Sounds too good to be true? It's actually even better. The inner workings of the blockchain are based on open standards and decentralized. Most importantly, they are verifiable by anyone at any time. For our users, this means the ultimate security, enterprise-level reliability and peace of mind. Within hours of the ship leaving port, the importer receives the smart BL and the transfer to the release agent can be made. Well ahead of its cargo, the Smart BL is already at its final destination and the goods can be released as soon as the ship arrives. No delays, no surprises, no worries. Cargo X, into the future, full speed ahead. Okay. Um, yes. Okay, so uh, moving on, as explained, the platform itself is already live and working, as can be witnessed by many partners that we are working with. Our hard work has, has been recognized by international group of PNI clubs, as we are one of the six companies worldwide to be approved for the transfer of the bill of lading documents. Out of these six, only three are using blockchain, and to the best of our knowledge, we are the only one using the public Ethereum network. I'd just like to take another minute here to explain the security and privacy aspects of the platform. We have designed everything to be secure by default. That's why all transfers need to be signed by user's private key. Cargo X cannot transfer or modify documents in any way. Our platform just serves as a proxy to the public blockchain. The platform is also completely GDPR compliant. We do not store any document or personal data on the blockchain. <coughs> Once document is uploaded to the platform, a unique hash is generated from the document, and this is the only information recorded on the blockchain. The document itself is encrypted and uploaded to the distributed file system. This way, any recipient can verify the authenticity on the issue of the document using publicly available data. While the current iteration of the platform is very much focused on maritime industry, the underlying technology is capable of so much more. The blockchain document transaction system allows for the transfer of structured and unstructured documents in any industry, be it maritime, shipping, or any other. Uh, that's why we started working on the third generation of the platform, which is industry agonistic from start. There are over 50 kinds of documents already supported. New ones are being added constantly. The user interface has been greatly simplified to enable a seamless sign up and usage. If you have ever used email, you'll feel right at home. We support documents of title, such as bills of lading and guarantees of origin. These require a precise transfer log to be transfer tracked completely on chain. Other documents fall into category of authenticity documents. These include different kinds of certificates, for example, for these documents, it's vital to understand who issued the document and to verify that it's really original. And all of this is recorded on the blockchain. The platform is capable, uh, applicable to many fields of supply chain where proof of authenticity is needed. For example, it's perfect for exchanging bills of materials, for electricity trading, legally binding or bidding documents and certificates. 
and we're still providing the platform on a pay-per-use basis with no hidden costs. Lastly, I would like to go through some of the use cases of the existing platform. Here we have a use case of a house bill of lading exchanged directly between an export and in China and imported in Slovenia. This was the first document that we actually uh, transferred on the platform and it was transferred in 15 seconds instead of days. Another use case is an interesting one as it involves financial institutions. Here an exporter created a document which was transferred to a Bangladeshi bank and then to a Slovenian bank. The bill of lading was used as a collateral to make sure the goods are paid for before being released. Here's another case involving the master bill of lading for international shipping line in the break of cargo. The document was transferred directly from the issuer in China to the recipient in Peru on the smart BL platform. So the platform works for any kind of modality for any kind of uh, bill of lading document, if with, uh, whether it's a house bail document, a master bail document, telex release, seaway bill, or road documents such as airway bills and uh, roadway bills. Lastly, I have another case which was uh, involved Spain and Brazil. Brazil is especially interesting here as there has been strong movements within the Brazilian customs to offer easier access to companies using completely digital documents. That's it. Uh, again, you're kindly invited to join our platform. It's free and open to everybody and explore. If you have any additional questions, Peter and I can answer them now. If you'd like to get more information, please do get in touch. Thank you. Thanks, Boyan and, and, uh, and Peter. Uh, we've got, uh, I think we have a question or two that came in uh, via chat here. Uh, Stephen Thomas asked, how about oil cargoes? I'm sorry, oil cargoes? I, I, I think he's talking about uh, oil transport and, uh, and moving. Peter, so maybe you can take this one. Yeah, uh, hey, Peter here. Um, it works for all kinds of uh, transports, right? Uh, so we are moving ahead with container shipments, of course, and then it's uh, the classical dry bulk. And our pipeline is now growing in the uh, liquid bulk as well, because there's a number of transactions of documents in that segment as well. Uh, the target industry in the uh, liquid uh, bulk is um, happy to use the platform in a way to also interact with financial institutions like banks. And uh, it's especially useful for trading because you can resell uh, the goods while still on the water. Uh, and you can do that by moving the ownership of the uh, cargo by ownership of the bill of lading. Uh, by different traders, through different traders. So it's very efficient for, for the trading as such. So yes, I can confirm liquid bulk is also one of our uh, target, uh, target industries. Okay. okay. All right. So we have a question from Leonardo. Is there a payment solution integrated in your solution? Okay, so um, maybe if you can expand on this question a bit, so because payment is a really broad subject, but uh, I can just give you a general answer on this general question, and that's that we are looking into it. We have been talking with different uh, payment providers, but no such solution is currently integrated into the platform. Okay, so if you have any further questions, please do get in touch and uh, we can discuss uh, specifics, okay? Yeah, yeah a couple, a couple more question, questions here. Yeah, I mean for Leonardo. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, Sean, it's Chris. Yes. Um, Bohan, what, on the payment question, what kind of payment processor or payment company would, be, would you be looking for from an ideal standpoint as far as Cargo X is? Uh, point of view. I, I mean, again, what we do is we, we are focused on document exchange. So we have, we are constantly looking into value added services that would, you know, increase the value of the platform. One of those would also be a possibility to make payments, but that's not the core feature of the platform. Uh, so it's really difficult to answer now what kind of 
possibilities we're looking at. I can tell you for a fact, and maybe Peter can also uh, expand a bit more. We have been talking with different payment institutions and payment providers, and they're quite interested into you know working together and uh, either integrating their uh, payment service into our platform or vice versa. But so far, no final decisions have been made. What I can add here is we are also looking into into a broader ecosystem and and connecting to the trade finance platforms. Uh, this is ongoing discussion right now with a couple of consortiums, uh, basically to merge the best of the technology, the best what technology has to offer. We believe our technology is splendid to uh, change to, to to transact the ownership of the documents of title. We can link that to the uh, financial institutions, to the trade finance, in terms of you know linking it to the letter of credit or to the uh, to the payment guarantee. Um, so I believe that that kind of ecosystem will be will be actually the future. Yeah. Okay, Sean, can I just ask one more question? Um, sure. Would um, as you've experienced people coming onto the platform, what has been have there been any um, startup? or integration challenges that uh, companies have encountered that either have been problems or you've helped them overcome? That's an interesting question. I'm not quite sure how, how actually to respond. So Petra, if you can help this out, but I mean, we did have some integrations with certain companies, but this was mostly my experience was with platforms where they provide, you know, services to NVOCCs or shippers, and they wanted to have an additional possibility of also transferring digital documents. So for them, it was, you know, a really simple or no brainer having, a, you know, everything on one platform and then to have to print out the document and send it by a career service instead of doing any, everything digitally, it was much easier and much simpler and it makes sense to integrate a platform like ours. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not quite sure what I can tell you about startups though. So Peter, can, can you share your thoughts on that uh, question? Well, difficult. I, I'm not sure if I completely understood the question, but I can comment is that the, the, the few integrations that we have done so far from a technical point of view went through smooth. Uh, every step of our platform is API supported. Um, we have recently uh, interconnected with one of the private blockchain uh, platforms. Um, and I, I, I cannot recall that we had any concrete issues. Um, the beauty of our platform is that through the API, we can connect into an existing uh, system and we actually we, we, we adopt to the existing workflow instead of us uh, asking the companies and the enterprises to change their uh, uh, work processes, right? So we adjust to the existing work process instead of the other way around. Great, thank you very much. Okay, uh, just, a, uh, just a point here in, uh, in Boyan, uh, Please, uh, please correct me if I have this uh, this wrong, but uh, I believe what you store on the blockchain is what you're tracking is document ownership, and you also put out there a uh, a one-way hash of the document. But the document itself is kept off off chain, which is what enables you to use the uh, the public blockchain and uh, and not worry about GDPR compliance as a as I, I mean yeah we do worry about gdpr compliance but that's exactly right you know so what's stored on the blockchain is the hash of the document and that hash is uh, for those who are not so technically inclined a digital fingerprint of the document which means that it uniquely identifies the document so <clears throat> whoever holds the document can verify that that document is an original by using this hash so he can calculate the hash to him himself himself and uh, match it against the hash which is on blockchain. This way, you know that the document you have hasn't been altered. And because we're using a blockchain uh, ERC-720 tokens on the Ethereum, now I'm getting a bit technical, you're actually passing along the token with this hash from one party to another. So you can also see 
who was the previous owner of this document, as well, you can also see exactly who issued that document. And this is indisputable precisely because every user uses their own private key to sign the transaction of the transfer. So this way, Cargo X is merely a proxy. So we are not storing anything on blockchain ourselves. The users are storing, we are just helping them out by providing this in a nice to use web application. They still sign the transaction, they still sign the actual hash that is going to go on the blockchain. And this is the only part of the information which is stored on the blockchain. The document itself can be transferred by any means necessary. I mean, for all technically, from the blockchain perspective we care, is you could even, even send it by email. But with mail, if, if you just send the document forward, you lose the ability to track the original and you lose the ability to track the authenticity. That's where the blockchain comes in. Now, for our platform to make things a bit more user-friendly, we store the document for the user inside the platform. So it's all pretty simple to use. It's similar to email and you can, you can get that document down, but you can still verify the information about the document independently of Cargo X through third party sites, which offer you insight into the public uh, Ethereum blockchain. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Uh uh, Jody, if you're there, I'll, I'll put you on the spot a little bit here. And uh, I, I know you're a, uh, also an expert in this area. Uh, your thoughts and observations here? Hi. Thanks for calling me out, Sean. Greatly appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> always, always glad to help out, Jody. Yeah. Um, I have had some experience in, with Cargo X um, in the past dealing with Stefan guys. So nice to hear uh, your voices again as colleagues um, and have been rel relatively focused in this area for I'd say uh, the last four or five years. <clears throat> um, I think from our perspective uh, looking at bills of lading it's more the underlying data that's always been a an asset um, to uh, the actual document. Um, and the provenance of that data from the specific uh, supply chain actors that drives the trust um, within the bill of lading. And the, the relative understanding that I have, um, well, not had, uh, I would say, with the, uh, the bill of lading on a, on a blockchain concept is how do you protect that document from being manipulated prior to entering a, uh, a, the Cargo X platform? I mean, this is the same question as you would have to how does DHL make sure that the document wasn't manipulated before they took the envelope from the issuer. So we are here relying on the issuer themselves to upload the document in a proper format so it's their responsibility so the issue is the one that issues the document and from there on the document is treated as an original so this way i don't see any problems with it being manipulated because it's not you know the consignee or the shipper who is uploading the document but it needs to start at the root so whoever creates the document needs to upload the document does that answer your question Yes, it does. Um, but I think it also then uh, provides some context that, you know, should we be looking further in the supply chain to create that provenance of the, of the document to create that relative value? Um, simply because the, the issues surrounding, so a house bill of lading on top of a, a, uh, an original bill of lading could also be uh, differentiated and so forth. Um, it's it's from my perspective that if the the industry is going to really take a lot of value from uh, distributed ledger and bills of lading, it's been able to track those data sets, as in shipper, consignee, cargo, from uh, the the actual inception of that data from within the supply chain. <clears throat> and I think if the industry takes those steps, um, we could really see a a, a, a renaissance within this document which as you rightly point out is um 
you know, from the 1800s and probably one of the first uses of paper um, in human history. Um, and we would obviously like to be part of, uh, you know, anything in that regard with Cargo X to help facilitate those um, flows, which are quite important, I would say, from our perspective for, uh, you know, customs, border force, uh, and, and so forth. It's that uh, aggregation of data and, and provenance of that data that I think makes up what we could potentially turn a, uh, a document into a digital asset. Um, with uh, the associated data moving between various parties. Yeah, I, I totally agree. No? So th there are two big distinctions that need to be made here. So one is the actual information about the document authenticity and ownership. And that's what can be solved by using a blockchain. And the other one is the quality or the actual transfer of data and uh, frankly, I don't see blockchain as a good fit here. So you need to, to have you know, systems which are structured in a way to actually export data in a structured format and then that transfer that uh, structured uh, data on. Uh, and blockchain is not appropriate for that, but blockchain is great to make sure that that data hasn't been altered and that that data has been actually created by the person or entity that is allowed to create the data. So, yeah, so on our end, we are trying to achieve this by you know, providing, I haven't spoken about this, but uh, in the first stage, we do expect that most of the documents that are going to get exchanged on our platform are going to be PDFs. Why? Because it's the easiest format to start working with. Currently, companies are receiving paper documents, and most of those paper documents are created not by hand, by from a, but from existing systems. They print them out, and the other, on the other um, end, they need to type them back into their system. So, creating a PDF is quite a trivial task. Uploading it to the Cargo X platform is also simple, and seeing it on the end, uh, other end is simple. But I expect that you know during the following years, it's data consolidation is going to happen. So we are not going to get PDFs anymore, but structured files, JSONs, XMLs, or YAML documents, which will then be automatically exported from the first system and automatically imported into the next system. So this way, you know, the integration is going to be really fluent and easy without any you know, human interaction or error. But uh, until there's some standards, and I see that there's standards already started to emerge, this is going to take some time uh, before all systems are updated to support this kind of interaction. Okay, thank you, Jody. Thank you, Boyan. Uh, I, the discussion that we just had, I think, is a very key point on uh, there's a need to recognize where blockchain is good and, uh, and where you're better off using uh, some other technology. And what we're seeing, seeing in solutions today is that blockchain is only a portion of an overall solution. And I think the discussion we just had uh, really does highlight that, that, uh, that blockchain is good for ensuring integrity and, and, and moving data across enterprises, but it's not good at all things for all people all, all the time. So one of the things we have focused on here at DSCI is identifying where and how to best use blockchain within an overall solution. And then we're developing a set of tools that, uh, that support that. Um, I mean, not a silver bullet, you know, so nothing is. But, you know, having that immutability does give you a lot of use cases where blockchain is a more appropriate solution than traditional ways of doing things. Yes, absolutely. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. It is really good at, uh, at workflow between companies in, uh, in specific situations. Uh, Ganesh, uh, Ganesh is with, uh, I should point out that Jody is the uh, CEO of uh, Marine Transport International based in the UK and Jody and his company has been focused uh, recently very much on, uh, on cross-border uh, workflows, uh, working with, uh, with uh, 
UK government uh, as they uh, as they embark on uh, on, on se separating themselves out of, uh, out of out of the EU with Brexit. Uh, Ganesh uh, is with SAP and uh, and heads uh, heads their, uh, their their blockchain activities. Uh, Ganesh, maybe uh, you'd like to uh, make a couple observations here, and I'd be interested in your thoughts on uh, today's discussion. Yeah, Sean, I think this uh, this area that uh, was presented just now makes makes a lot of sense. You know, we we've been working. Uh, this was one of the processes that we've been working on from a blockchain perspective. We've worked with several customers around the globe. And uh, this is a problem that, uh, as uh, was pointed out, currently exists. And uh, blockchain is a technology that can definitely help address a lot of the issues that exist in the international trade trade area. OK. No, thank you. And, and, uh, and maybe just, you know, as SAP's approach here, Ganesh, do you, uh, you know, I know, I know you're not focused, uh, you're focused on industry solutions, not necessarily on, uh, on, on general, what I'll characterize as general workflow management, but uh, do you see the work that folks like Cargo X is doing as, uh, as, as fitting into your overall industry solutions, or you know, obviously it's going to interface with SAP with the ERP uh, backends here. And it sounds like Cargo X has developed the APIs to do that. But uh, but how do you see this sort of solution fitting in with the work that SAP is doing? Yeah. So the POC that I mentioned is exact. Uh, I mean, from the description, looks exactly what uh, we developed a couple of years back. Uh, and we had our, a lot of our customers uh, uh, execute that POC. I've also published a blog post on that. <clears throat> on that. Uh, so this is definitely a cross-industry solution. You know, every every industry has uh, goods being transported across country boundaries, intermodal transport, etc. So uh, this uh, this is one of those areas where it's got cross-industry relevance. Uh, and uh, SAP's approach is uh, to not only look at such processes, but as you mentioned, take industry specific processes and and then uh, from a roadmap perspective, we plan to generalize, uh, generalize those, uh, those solutions there so they're applicable across multiple industries. So um, bill of lading, as was explained, is a cross industry solution material traceability is a cross industry solution, though it has nuances uh, in particular industries. Uh, so if you are in the food industry, you have the genealogy tracking provenance that you need to provide. If you are in a regulated industry or in the high tech industry or pharmaceutical, then you need to still provide material trace or require material traceability, but uh, have um, um, serialized uh, product information that needs to be tracked. So, uh, yeah, I mean, bo both both flavors of the solutions, uh, we are focusing on both of them. Okay. Thank you, Ganesh. Okay, we, I do see we have here a question from Magdalene. So she's asking about uh, customs where importers still need to present physical copies to clear their goods. So uh, maybe, Peter, you can answer this one, but I can say that we've been working with uh, some African countries and with um, customs in South America where the, there was a similar process. So they did uh, ask for a physical paper. And I can say that this is gradually changing. It's not changing as uh, you know, fast as one would hope. But uh, we definitely see a lot of, you know, interest in going this forward. So in the end, if there is interest, things can get moving quite fast. It all depends, you know, on how big the importer or exporter is and how willing they are to work with us together to come to that customs and try to move things along. Peter, if you want to add something. Yeah, I mean, you, you said it, right? It's all about leverage. Uh, the technology is here, it's proven. 
if, if we go to Cargo X, we are also P&I approved. So there's no legal restriction not to use a electronic bill of lading and uh, change ownership of it uh, through the platform. Uh, and the customs then react, of course, to the, to the pressure of the business. Um, we cannot expect the regulators to, to drive digitization, but they are open to it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good case from, from South America where for, for decades, uh, customs authorities have been asking for the, you know, uh, uh, blue ink signed and stamped uh, bill of lading in a paper format. And now they are open and they have already re released a number of, of ships uh, in bulk segment, uh, receiving the bill of lading in a, in a digital format through our platform. So things are changing. And of course, the enterprises and the business itself has a very large leverage to actually speed things up. Again, technology is here, uh, legally uh, covered, uh, so there are no risks to it. We just need to push it through uh, to have the, the, the global coverage. And of course, we're talking about a handful of countries in the world that are still asking uh, for the original uh, paper documents. Yeah, The rest of the world works, works in, in digital. Yeah. So if you have any specific questions, uh, I see that there is a lot of questions from Algeria, and this is maybe outside of the scope of this webinar. So please do get in touch via LinkedIn and we can discuss this uh, uh, in a one-on-one uh, -on -one call, okay? Uh, yeah, Jody, uh, anything you wanna add from uh, your work with uh, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs on, uh, on how the UK is approaching it? Yeah, sure. Um, I think from a, from a UK perspective, there is enough interest um, and enough understanding that, you know, just as the cargo, X uh, chaps mentioned that the technology has proven it's more about you know creating ecosystems now where we can plug all these uh, existing solutions together um, whereby we can create these industry vertical uh, solutions uh, under the mantle of, of what we call frictionless trade and I think particularly in my experience where I think Peter mentioned that you can't expect regulators to drive uh, adoption, but what we can expect from regulators is to understand, foster, uh, and help develop ecosystems, which is exactly the approach which has been taken now um, here in the United Kingdom. And uh, they're more than uh, willing to discuss with industry on how we can focus on trade and compliance issues um, under the mantle again of, of frictionless trade. I mean, I can tell you for a fact that the same thing is happening in the EU. We are part of the Digital Logistics Transfer Forum, where basically they are talking about the same things, you know, how to create an ecosystem where all these platforms can cooperate on one uh, specific uh, set of data in one specific way. Hey, Bohan and uh, <clears throat> Jody, this is Chris. Do you think it would, on this government regulator uh, acceptance question, do you think it would be helpful if uh, DSCI and CGE were to convene, offer to convene a conversation among customs authorities about what the state of <clears throat> blockchain use in um, uh, uh, shipping and this kind of bill of lading area would be and have maybe the UK government or other governments who are fast movers um, be willing to describe why they came to an area of acceptance? I mean, from my point of view, it wouldn't hurt, definitely. I mean, the more you talk about it, the more I think traction it's going to gain. So- Jerry, Jerry what do you think? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I know some of the, the trade agreements that um, have been undertaken for post-Brexit scenario focus around the element of data sharing and on a sovereign to sovereign basis, um, the use of distributed ledger and transfer of documents and data is high on the agenda. Um, and the government here is more than willing to interact with various different um, customs regimes in order to ensure that they can do this on a, on a global basis. So I would say definitely yes. Okay, well, we'll um, consider that and see if we can create a useful program that would be beneficial for accelerating industry's capability and, and government's acceptance. 
Great. Okay. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, Boy and Peter, closing comments here. We're coming up on the top of the hour. Um, maybe I'll just take 30 seconds to say that I, I believe, you know, it, it's, this is my opinion, that we are on a verge of, let's say, a third industrial revolution. We've gone through cycles, you know, of decentralization, centralization, and now we are again talking about decentralization. You know, internet started off decentralized. Now a lot of centralized services appeared, you know, Google, Amazon, Microsoft. But with blockchain and distributed file systems, we are again going into the way of decentralization. I, I think this is essential. This is going to happen in all the industries and it's going to affect everybody worldwide, especially because it's going to be you know, much simpler and much easier to do work and to you know, exchange data. And on the practical note, right, I mean, uh, we know we all work in, 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 with an idea of, of, of creating this ecosystem that's going to solve all the bottlenecks of the industries, right? Um, I'm also a spokesman of, of Step by Step, right? We have, for, for Cargo X perspective, a workable platform that is addressing a small part of the workflow, but it works, it's proven, it's, it's legally covered. Uh, and I, of course, you know, emphasize just start using it because that's also getting to know with, with, with the technology, with the blockchain. Um, and it's, it's, it's in a given year, you can save X amount of, 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 of cost already. And of course, while the, while the ecosystem evolves, then you start adding new processes into, into the platforms to the, the, the end harvest the best of what technology can offer. <coughs> Yes, uh, and, and that's uh, that, that's a very good point. I would say, you know, a couple of key takeaways from this morning's uh, or today's session is uh, is one, um, blockchain offers automation capabilities uh, across industries and enables the elimination of a lot of things that are done via paper today, and we add great efficiencies to uh, to to the overall process. Uh, nowhere is that more evident. Than, uh, than within the uh, the marine transportation industry and uh, and bill and, and bill of ladings as uh, a, 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 as they move, you know, the cargo is moving moving in front of the bill of ladings today. Um, solutions like Cargo X and and what they're doing enables the uh, the bill of lading to arrive prior to the uh, to the actual shipments, and there's tremendous productivity improvements uh, that can be gained by doing that. You know, two is that as the second takeaway is that that it's easy to get started you know it's easy to take a uh, a workflow that you have today that uh, that is paper based and uh, in blockchain enable that workflow and achieve benefits very very quickly on that it doesn't it doesn't need to be a sophisticated solution it can be uh, a simple set of tasks and workflow that you can uh, you can quickly automate, and you within your own blockchain can control that and uh, and gain the benefits. And uh, and uh, you know three uh, DSCI has a set of capabilities and tools that uh, that can help you assess those opportunities and approach them in a uh, in, in a logical fashion that achieves results very very quickly. Uh, Boyan and Peter, I'd like to uh, thank you for uh, for what's has been a very informative session today, and uh, and very much appreciate you your participation, and uh, to all the others who participated participated today, thank you very much for joining. Uh, I hope you got uh, as much value out of the session as as I did today. So thank you thank all. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Have a lovely day. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. And this concludes our session today.